Number two, why are the fallen angels and demons fighting us? Well, when a third of the angels left heaven, they double-crossed God, thinking that they would be able to start their own kingdom. Therefore, God told them that they were going to be going to everlasting hell. The fallen angels hate both God and God's creation, <laughs> i.e. us. God created man, and they cannot stand us. Their job is to make sure we become part of Satan's kingdom. They do this by tempting us, by causing depression, problems, giving us choices like fornication, being able to lie, having greed, wanting to take drugs, things of that nature. The devil's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil can use family members to fight with you or get co-workers to cause you problems. We are fair game. <laughs> we are God's sons and daughters. We serve our creator. We have full control over demons if we have uh, uh, given ourselves to Jesus Christ. Then he lives inside of us. The power to cast out demons comes from who you are a son of the Most High God. We must know who we are in God. We should be following all of God's rules and be without sin. Well, as much as humanly possible, we all know none of us are perfect. Just because we can't see the wind doesn't mean the wind does not exist. When we fight our enemy, we are using weapons that we have probably never used in the past. To activate our weapons, we must use our voice and use words that will put the warfare into action. Number three, let's take a gun. Guns need bullets to actually be effective tool to hurt someone in the flesh. So what we do is we will load the gun with bullets. By the same token in the spirit, we will use our mouths also known as the two-edged sword, and load it with the correct bullets, which are, i.e., the words that will be effective in the spiritual realm. This is why it is important to read God's Word. You get your artillery or God's Word from the Bible. We can bind demons, cancel their assignments, or send them back to hell with saying, I bind you cancel your assignment and send you to hell where you will stay. You might say, I plead the blood of Jesus on myself and I put a hedge of protection around me at all times. No weapon formed against me will prosper. You can see from the words that I have chosen that I am covering myself in the Jesus blood and I have put a hedge of protection around me and I also add that no weapon formed against me will prosper. These are effective words for protection. To be effective in spiritual warfare, you should be following God's rules of conduct. Every time you do not follow his rules, you put a means of where the enemy can take up residence in you. You create a so-called hole in your armor. Okay, and then the enemy will burrow in and they take up residence. So to be effective, you want to be following God's rules. Your armor will get holes in it if you lie, cheat, fornicate out of marriage, or do anything that is not of God. Unforgiveness of people will cause major holes to develop. You are giving the enemy basically permission to enter your body when you do things that are not of God. You are piercing your own armor. Therefore, it is important to repent or ask forgiveness daily to clean your soul. It is sort of like a, almost like a reset button. Make sure that you have forgiven everyone in your life, whether they're dead or alive or whatever, get on your knees, talk to God and tell them you forgive them and please take the pain from me on this person. I no longer want to have any resentment toward them. Lord, I give you the pain. 
and I thank you for taking this from me. I no longer have any animosities toward that person. Okay, thank you.